Welcome back to the channel everyone out at the large greenhouse checking up on things. So this weekend was really drab we had no sunshine. It's been snowing on and off. It's been darn cold. It's probably only about 18 or 19 degrees outside at the most right now without the wind chill. So it's definitely chilly. But this weekend we were so bored that we just started scouring our internet, local internet sources, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, anything we could find to pick up some free stuff and find some really cheap stuff. So I got this old steel water tank for free. I picked this up as scrap and this is a nice solid non-leaking and sealed water tank. It's still got probably like 20 or 30 pounds of rosin in the bottom of it. So I have to do some work with this. It's all basically frozen up, but for the most part, it's intact. There's no leaks in it. The rust hasn't gotten through or anything. It's a nice solid steel tank and it's got threading. So once I wash and flush this out, I will be able to use this for a thermal mass and be able to run water right in, run water right out like a closed system. This is going to be very cool. I'll be able to paint this up after I sand it down and stuff. So always be on the lookout for stuff like that. Whenever I'm driving around for work or wherever, I'm always checking out curbside pickups and I'm always grabbing free windows and kind of stuff like this. So one man scrap is certainly my treasure. I'm going to be able to use that and use it for a very long time. So we don't have any sunlight, no solar activity today. Really have no energy coming from the sun. It is fully cloudy. It's pretty warm in here actually. It's not too bad. I can take my gloves and stuff off. One thing I wanted to note when I was coming in, our little solar heater box, you can see in there pretty decently today. It's not fully sunny. The fan is actually running, which is pretty wild because this is one of our newer fans and this fan wasn't working as well. I was using this fan outside the greenhouse to basically make an aerated, static aerated compost pile. So I left this out in the elements and kind of haphazardly covered it with an old used window from the greenhouse. So it saw a lot, a lot of moisture. So I think if I take this apart, I'll be able to clean up all the connections in there and stuff. It still works. It works great, but I think there's a lot of resistance and friction due to corrosion. But this brand new one, it's pulling moisture free air out of there. It doesn't look like it's running very fast because of the frames per minute. It's actually running a decent amount of air out of there and it's using basically whatever's coming through the clouds. You can see that it is not sunny out, very cold. And we're not having enough sun to actually run our water either. So really that's the only thing running down here right now. And that's not too bad, but we don't have any sun to heat that box up a whole lot. It might be like five, 10 degrees warmer than the actual greenhouse because it's so sealed up, but we haven't seen any sunlight all day. I'm heading down to the other end of the greenhouse. All of our plants are doing well. I'll just do a little check up here. Even our new sprouts doing very well, not getting leggy, and they're almost ready to be transplanted fully because we're getting some second layers of leaves. And as soon as these pop, all of their second leaves, even the smallest of their second set of true leaves, I wanna take them out of here and split them up. Cause you can see we really heavily sewn all of those, those tat soys and stuff. So I can re-plug them back into beds. I've been kind of doing that cause some of these were so heavily over sewn. These ones are actually starting to pop off true leaves already. And I transplanted those out before. And that is not always the best because if you transplant before those first set of true leaves come on, you can have a lot of root problems and root rot and they'll just fall over and die. Now I've seen that happen a few times where the transplants don't do as well because you didn't wait for that first set of true leaves. As soon as it's got that first set of true leaves, even if it's very tiny, it's ready to go. You can transplant it. Don't worry about what people say. You'll be able to have success with it but before those true leaves come on it's half and half it's 50 50 whether your plant is going to survive or not just give a quick update here on all our little rapini broccoli you can hear our geothermal just cycling kind of sounds like a vacuum turning on and off there so we've got decent growth on these i'm pretty sure these are rapini broccoli starting to look like mustard but i'm not 100 percent sure here so i may have mislabeled my own plants there and i'm very known to do that so very cool stuff we've got all of these kale they're throwing off their first set of true leaves and they are very thick and very heavy planted i'm going to go through and thin those out and the ones i thin out i will just transplant into other places of the greenhouse and now you can really see all of these little crops coming in we've got lots of little green life through this whole bed here very very cool stuff 
Okay, so I didn't come out here to talk about all the plants or show how well they're doing, even though I do that every time I come out here because I'm fascinated that we're growing through the entire winter. And being right on the edge of zone 5A, 4B, we saw some really cold darn weather. We saw like zone 3 weather about a week or two ago when that storm came through. So I'm going to shed my coat because it's not too bad in here. Let's see what we got for a temp up here. I'm sitting about 55, 56, 57 or something like that. That is awesome. That is totally awesome. And it's a little bit warmer. We're sitting 19 degrees outside, let's say, and we're just pulsing this air. You can hear this clicking on and off for us. So we're just pulsing that air just in short bursts and it's short bursting warm air. So this end of the greenhouse is probably a little warmer than the other end. So this is what I picked up today. Got this thing for a hundred dollars. And this is a gosh dang find right here, man. I got the tools for it. A free drill bit too. We've got the tools for it. This is awesome to me. Let's take this bad boy all apart. I am super stoked with this. I'm like a kid in a candy store. I was super happy to find this and find this so cheap. I could not believe that I could pick this up for a hundred bucks. Somebody was trying to clean out their garage and I picked it up off of him. Like as soon as he said yes, I was like, I'll be there. I'm going to pick it up right now. Don't you let that go to anybody. So we've got all the pieces and it is well put together. The only minor thing is this little crack here, but this is a solid one piece right here so that is not going to let anything through that could potentially start a fire or cause any damage here so i was even more excited to show this to everybody and the potential for what i'm going to be able to do with this is phenomenal because i'm going to be able to use all of those free wood chips that i get i'll be able to dry them out and i'll be able to use them as fuel the average ton of wood chips if it's dried out and ready to burn has about 11 million BTU potential when it's burned. And breaking that down over hours or BTU output potential over time, that is going to be phenomenal for us. We are going to be able to heat this greenhouse and we're gonna be able to heat the next greenhouse we're gonna build possibly with this. And we'll just continue Jean Payne heating this greenhouse. But for now, this is my next project on the list. I am super stoked to have this. So, the actual grading flips, I've got a tool that came with it so this little tool here <clears throat> i kind of have a cold still so i apologize my throat is extremely dry this tool fits right over the end here and allows us to flip and basically dump anything that's unused which it might not even be very necessary if we're using wood chips because everything will fall right down into this little container here and that is where you pull your wood ash from and having wood ash is going to be a godsend for our plants compost all around wood ash is great we can even make soap out of that wood ash as long as we're only burning wood so this thing is pretty darn cool i got the top piece i'm not sure how i'm going to route all of this up yet because i'm going to have to pipe it up and then pipe it out so i don't want piping too close to the poly on my greenhouse but for the most part i'm not worried about that once i get everything situated and figure out where i want it i will start doing my piping and then i'll insulate it and then i'm going to do a whole bunch of experiments with using the extra heat off of this I've been scouring the internet for free bricks and stuff like that too so i'll basically just build a nice brick enclosure all the way around it i'm going to use tons of solar i'm going to order myself a couple more of these solar fans and possibly set up a new solar system so i'll have a whole bunch of solar going on and that solar will be able to draw all of the heat off of this thing because when you're burning you obviously have to exhaust that carbon dioxide carbon monoxide all the smoke so we'll be exhausting that out and i'm going to use every inch of that pipe either wrap my coil around it some copper coil or i'll be using it in a way where i can transfer the heat a little bit better and the less heat that goes out of the building, the better. Well, if you guys know me, I'm going to do everything I can to possibly bump this up and use all of the potential heat as possible and with solar power also. So this is going to be another free heating experiment. I'm basically going to be using 
free wood chips that I get dumped from our local wood chip company and they'll dump them at will. I've got another two loads coming. I told them I needed some wood chips as soon as I got this thing. I've got a bunch of wooden pallets. I may build some type of little structure. I've got a lot of extra scrap wood. So I'm gonna build some type of structure where I can throw them up on top of some type of grating, I'll use some type of mesh, kind of like the mesh we're using, some hardware cloth or something like that, something along those lines. I've got all types of old fencing and stuff, so I'm going to come up with some cool stuff to basically keep those wood chips dry, and if they are not dry and they're really, really fresh cut, I'm going to dry them out faster. So I'm gonna to wanna to allow a lot of airflow through those wood chips to prevent them from composting. I'll set aside a certain amount, let those compost tarp them up, throw a bunch of inoculation on there, a bunch of urine, uh, horse manure, cow manure, chicken manure. We can always find all types of free manure. One of my subscribers actually on our last video had commented, hey, go check out Craigslist to find a bunch of horse dung or cow dung or whatever to inoculate your piles with. And we have so many farmers around here. They're glad to see the extra waste go because that's less that they have to work. And they compost all of their own stuff and use it in their gardens and whatnot. But there is just so much produce sometimes when you have a horse farm or cows or pigs. So that's another great point and that subscriber was very, very right. Everybody should always be scouring the internet for those free pickups and stuff like that. All right, so back to the little stove here. I was so excited that I got this. I got the actual tools with it. I'm not sure when this was made. Birmingham Banner BS and R Company. I don't see any date. It has a 16 stamp on it like 1916 probably this thing is ancient here so i have a piece of history and i have a piece of history that's going to last me a lifetime i want to show all the parts here too i've got the actual stove top this is amazing i've actually got a stove top that is able to be cooked upon i'm going to be able to cook out here i'm going to be able to cook food in the greenhouse which is freaking amazing i'm pretty excited about this find and for the price a hundred dollars you can't beat that someone was just trying to clear out space they had a corn burner and i was able to pick this up for a hundred bucks and this is unheard of basically this thing would really run you like three hundred dollars if someone knew what they had so we've got this front plate and i'm just going to tie a wire to it so i'll be able to pull that and then basically close it up because this is our feed right here so we'll be feeding our wood chips right in there and then this other tool this is amazing that it came with everything so you've got your tool here and you can pick up your plates pick up the centerpiece all of this is basically made for this very very cool stuff so let's check out the bottom here this is actually where you're going to feed your air in and when it gets clogged up you're going to be popping this off and that's where you're empty all of your ash and whatnot all the waste materials and we get this situated here so you're basically going to be able to open and close and control the amount of air that's coming in there and i'll be able to basically burn a small fire fill this up with wood chips and i'm going to do a bunch of testing and see how long i can get stuff to burn and that's after i get it all set up and routed out but just the simple fact that i was able to pick this up and find something like this a piece of history that is going to last me a lifetime i really wanted to share this with everybody and share the antiqueness of it and all antiques are not of use but this is the kind of thing that you'll be able to use and reuse and reuse and i really can't wait to get this thing set up because just like with all my projects i go 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 my wife thinks i'm crazy sometimes because i'll just continually binge on a project till I get it to the way I like it. And then I like to bring it to you guys. I like to share everything I'm finding, everything I'm thinking, and the outcome of the experiments that I do. Some work, some don't, some work better than others, and some are just kind of duds. So the level of excitement is there. I literally just picked this up, brought it out of the truck, and set it right here. I'm going to have to clean it up a little bit, but other than that, it is ready to go. I basically got my exit pipe there and then i'll be able to route that so this thing is going to be kind of in this general area i'll be picking up and rearranging i definitely have to get my methane it is 
filling up a little bit of methane but not a whole lot we're not getting a whole lot of methane creation off of this system so i may do away with it i may kind of set it over here for now and just let it do its thing to see if i can get a little more because i really really wanted to burn some methane and show everybody the process of collecting it because i went through a lot of work to actually build a methane collection kit as cheaply as possible like always so i got a very cheap methane capture kit but i still want to leave it running to see what kind of methane i can burn off of it i would be very stoked if i get to burn a flame off of the methane from our compost so that aside i'm going to be rearranging all of this and getting myself a nice wood burning stove set up in the greenhouse i've got a lot of bricks and flat pavers like this that i'll be able to use for a base and I'm basically just going to add upon this and create a massive thermal mass out of this little stove here. I'm gonna see about heating water. I mean, obviously it's for heating air, but I'm going to heat as much water off of this bad boy as I possibly can. There is so much potential for heat gain. I might be able to grow a lot more stuff and be a little bit more successful than with just my compost heating because it's not an active combustion. This is going to produce a lot of heat. Our compost heating is producing a lot of heat but not quite the BTU potential that this has and this will be inside the greenhouse all of our compost is out back all four tons of those wood chips out there burning up and creating all the heat that's blowing in the greenhouse slowly and transferring we don't even have enough Sun to be transferring any water this hasn't ran the whole time I've been in here but I may have shut it off too yeah that little system is actually off let me go turn this on here I guess that helps you got to have the system on I bet it's going to drain it pretty darn quick. Because that water pump is quite a deal. That water's a little chilly, not too bad. It's starting to get a little warmer. <laughs> that feels pretty good. So aside from having that compost heat, we're going to have an actual furnace out here to heat the airspace, heat some water up, and just double up on all those factors. My hands are absolutely filthy from carrying that thing. But the potential... For what we're going to be able to do with this is there we're going to have a lot of success with this and i'm really excited to begin working on this and get the project going and we've still got a little bit of winter left i'm surprised that water's running as long as it is looks like it's holding at about 11.4 volts on the battery so we're still cranking some water through that's awesome <laughs> sorry i kind of get distracted real easy when things do things that i don't expect so I'm surprised that's running as long as it is right now with no sun at all today. So here's the part where everybody gets to drop their comments and give me ideas for when I go forward because I am definitely not an HVAC guy. I've gone through a ton of courses on my own teaching myself a bunch of HVAC stuff. But plumbing, routing, getting this exiting out of the greenhouse that is going to be my next step so i'd like some input on that you guys always have great ideas all you subscribers are very intelligent and i get a lot of good feedback from you guys so i really appreciate that and this is where i'm always looking for input this is something new to me never actually had to route and plumb a vertical furnace we got our corn burner in the house and that just basically shoots straight outside because it's got a fan that cranks that out this is basically just an na system there is no force no added force behind it there's no fan blowing the actual exhaust out this is just going to be a natural draw and if anybody knows anything about this little guy i definitely like to hear the feedback on that because i really don't know how old this is exactly so it's only got a little eight and a 16 on the back of this plate here the feed plate so I'd really like to know how old this sucker actually is. I'm gonna do a little research tonight cause I just brought this home and I haven't even told the wife yet. So I only spent a hundred bucks. <laughs> it's a pretty good deal. You guys might have to help me sell that one to the wife, but this thing is going to prove its worth over and over and I'm gonna use it winter after winter. Like I said, please drop any feedback you got for me in the comments. I'm real excited to get this set up, but I gotta do a little bit of research before I do so.